you shout amen? If you really feel it, would you shout amen? <clears throat> I talked a little bit last week for the, uh, those, the radicals that were here early last week. We talked about setting aside a whole day unto the Lord. And I just asked the question, when was the last time that you spent a whole day where you did not turn on your phone, turn on the news, follow anything, get on social media. And I just asked, I said, is there anybody that can tell me the last time they spent an entire day where they dedicated it unto the Lord? And I even spoke for myself, and I couldn't even think of a day where I had done that. Where the entire day... I was completely, I didn't have anything that was, besides maybe our media fast week, where I dedicated it unto the Lord. And I challenged those radicals that were here, and I want to extend that to you that are here tonight, is that we make our Sundays a day that we completely dedicate ourselves unto the Lord. It's going to transform our services on Sunday nights. Where we don't go home and we veg out and we, we go back to the work of the flesh. That's what it is, is we're getting in the spirit and we stay in the spirit all day. We don't go home and mow the lawn. We don't go home and do lawn. I know that's tough. I got a family. I get it. I know that's tough, but I promise you it's going to transform our services on Sunday night. And not only that, it's going to cause a transformation in you. Those that are here is when you begin to give up the works of the flesh and you just get in the spirit, it's going to make a difference. And so I want to challenge the rest of you that are here tonight is that we make that focus effort is that on Sundays we go and we make sure that we dedicate this day completely to the Lord. Everybody shout amen. If you're with me, shout amen. If you're not with me, shout amen. All right. Good. You're listening. That's great. Find somebody, shake their hand, welcome them to the house of the Lord. Man, I'm so happy to be here. I see some of you got your tennis shoes on. I'm going right now to put mine on because I'm telling you, we're going to have a time in the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. Step across the aisle, shake somebody's hand, welcome them tonight. the name of Jesus in this place? Can we do that across this room? Give him the praise that he's worthy of. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you. We love you. You're worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. This is what
50, Pastor Man read it this morning. It says to praise him according to his excellent greatness. Think about how great God is. Think about how great God is and then think about how great God has been to you. What would you do if, if you praised him according to that excellent greatness? the Holy Ghost in this place. Amen. You can, uh, you can make your way back to your seats. Our ushers can uh, go ahead and come. About to take up our tithe and offering here in a moment. How many are glad they came to church on a Sunday night? Amen. Well, we have one announcement next Sunday night is Dominion Commit or no it's Mission Sunday next Sunday night's Mission Sunday I don't that's today today's Mission Sunday okay I thought that was next Sunday all right today's Mission Sunday all right I guess that's not really an announcement is it <laughs> all right well that's right amen Amen. So let's go ahead and pray over our offering. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you for allowing us to come into your house today. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to give. I pray that you would bless the giver and the gift in Jesus' name. As you give, I'm going to, uh, we have a very special event taking place tonight. I believe it will become more prevalent as these services, as these Sunday night services continue and mature, we have a, we have what is called a word shot. Everybody say word shot. And so what that is, what a word shot is, 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 is when we will, will have someone come up and they're going to preach to us what's on their heart for a few moments. And tonight we have Brother Matthew Caballero with us tonight. Brother Matthew, come up. Flow in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus name. Okay. Amen. He'll come in about two minutes. We want to invite everybody to come and give. Amen. And take about three minutes and shake hands as you come and give. Amen. We're in the Holy Ghost tonight. How many believe that? All right. Brother Matthew, come. Take your liberty. Flow in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I'm so excited to be in new service tonight. How many of you are excited to be in new service tonight? Amen. Amen. I feel, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. And before I get any further, I want to thank Pastor, thank Brother Brad. Why don't we give it up for Brother Brad? Amen. Isn't he just the best? Amen. Amen. I'm so excited to be here tonight, and I'm an honor to stand here. It's a privilege to stand here tonight, and I believe the Lord has put something on my heart, and it's been in my heart for a few months. Tonight, I'm going to release it and watch what the Lord does. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, why don't we turn to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, amen. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place, and I believe God is going to speak, not just through Brother Brad, but tonight I believe God is going to use me to speak to you young people, and I believe the Holy Ghost is going to move, amen. Amen. Sorry, I'm trying to find my page. It's weird. 
James chapter 1 and verse 8 says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You can set your Bibles down and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Mm. Why don't you clap your hands unto the Lord and shout with a voice of triumph. Shout like you have some victory. Shout like God has brought you from something tonight. Amen, amen. You can, you can be seated. You can be seated. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. How many of you have ever been around an indecisive person? It seems like they can never make a decision. You go out to eat and you get to the restaurant and you ask them, what do you want to eat? And they're like, I don't know. And you had a 30-minute car ride to the restaurant, and they still don't know what they want to eat. And we see we're living in an hour in which society's flipped all upside down. You got the family structure flipped upside down. You got people, uh, Bible says, a double-minded man, a, a man who's unstable, a man who's unwavering, and a man who's easily pursued by worldly things. The Bible talks about a double-minded man. Now, to put it lightly, what the scripture is talking about is a man whose loyalties are divided between the world and God. The, the, the loyalty of a man is tested and he's wavering and he's shaking because he's so unsettled in his spirit. But tonight, I come tonight with a word from heaven. You need to get make up in your mind that you're all in for God. You need to make up in your mind. I'm not just praying on Sunday, but I'm praying every day. I'm not just praying on Wednesday, but I'm praying every single day. Amen. Amen. We read of Abraham, and Abraham lived in Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, if you don't know what, a, what Sodom and Gomorrah is a place, it's a place of great sin. It's a place that was, uh, when God created the world, it was disgusting sin in this city. And God spoke to Abraham, and he said, Abraham, I'm about to wipe out Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham said, God, if there be five righteous among them, will you spare? the city and the Lord said if there be five righteous Abraham I will spare the city but you read the story Abraham kept going back to God and eventually God would wipe out Sodom and Gomorrah because there were no righteous people in there and so God wipes out Sodom and Gomorrah and he tells Abraham Abraham take your family take Lot and don't look back and he says I'm not going to look back so they leave Sodom and Gomorrah but here's a problem problem one of them don't listen and they look back and I believe the Bible says they turn into a pile of salt because when you look back at the world and you look back and say well well maybe maybe living for God is just not my thing maybe living for God is just not my 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 style of life let me tell you tonight youth consecration week ought not to just be a week but it ought to be a lifestyle youth consecration week ought not just to be a week that brother Brad calls us to but it ought to be a lifestyle And the children of Israel were in the wilderness. And God had just brought the children of Israel from Egypt out of Pharaoh's hands. And we read in the story that the children of Israel murmured and complained in the sight of the Lord. They complained, oh God, why did you bring me in this wilderness to die? Why did you bring me all the way out here to die? And we got new people coming in the church and I... I thank God for that pastor, and I'm thankful for new souls. I'm thankful for new converts. I'm thankful for people who receive the Holy Ghost. And this church is in great season where people are going to receive the Holy Ghost. And I believe that. How many of you believe that? I believe that. 
I'm not preaching against that, but what I'm telling you is uh, we got converts coming in and they see all the stuff and they get, God fills them with the Holy Ghost and they have a great experience. But then they walk out those doors and they walk right back into what life brought, where God brought them from. And they say, well, pastor, well, pastor, I don't know if all this holiness is necessary. I, I don't know if all this, uh, all this dressing nice and talking this way. Because when I was in Egypt, I didn't have to talk this way. When I was in Egypt, I didn't have to dress this way. There was no one telling me how to praise the God. There was no one telling me. Back in Egypt, I had food and I had water. And I feel this generation has great talent, great ability, great singers, man. And I tell you what, we are in the end times. This is not, this is, this is, this is, not, I'm not preaching from a place of performance tonight. This is what God has been turning in my spirit for the past few months. And I've watched as young people will have a move of God. They will get touched in these altars and they'll walk right back out the door, right into that corner porn addiction and God brings them from Egypt but they're wondering maybe it was easier back in Egypt but I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost I'm trying to preach someone back in your calling someone back in your future you get a made up mind you get a sperm a firm spirit and say this word is not some pages on a book but this is a lifestyle this is a holy place this is a place where I worship God I want every young person to come to this front right now. Every young person, if you're youth hyphen, come to the front. Come to the front. And here's what I want. I know this is preached about a lot. And I know you hear this every day. And you, it feels like it's repeating in your ears. Why is it repeating in my ears, pastor? Because the Lord's trying to wake some people up. He's trying to tell you, wake up. Wake up. I got a call. There's work for you to be done. Stop being double-minded. Stop being unstable. You get in the prayer room. You lock in with God. And watch what God does with your life. So here's what I want to do everyone to lift up their hands and I want you to recommit to God God my mind is yours my body is yours my spirit my mind is all yours I'm not going back to Egypt I know it's been hard I know the world has been tempting you I know it's been hard in school but just make up in your mind I'm not going back to Egypt I'm not going back to Egypt come on young lady I know you're called of God I know you're gifted I know you're talented but you can't have two minds one for the world and one for God because you're either going to serve one master and love it or hate the other all across this building why don't you just lift your hands and receive the word of the Lord hallelujah brother Matt's preached a word from heaven that God put on his heart I'm making up my mind I'm making up my mind our God is great No. 
would you lift your hearts and your voice and prepare yourself for the word of the Lord tonight. The presence of God is so strong in this room tonight. Lord, you reign, you reign, you reign in victory. You reign in majesty. Hallelujah. Why don't we take 10 seconds and just give him our highest praise right now. Hallelujah. What a mighty king you are. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I want to publicly say that God used Brother Matthew Caballero tonight. How many are thankful for that word shot? Brother Matt, you did an incredible job. And uh, we would have let him go, but I had him on a five-minute timer. And I was over here coaching him a little bit, trying to tell him, hey, listen, when the Spirit moves in, it's time to make that altar call. He did an amazing job. God's going to continue using that young man. Amen. But tonight we are blessed. Brother, Brother Brad Kendrick, can you come here? I can't decide whether he looks young or really old. But he sent out a notification today to come to church with your shouting shoes on. Amen. How many are going to preach with your youth pastor tonight? You got the best youth pastor in America. Why don't you put your hands together and embarrass him while he comes to preach to you right now? Don't you think we have the best pastor in the whole world? <laughs> oh, man. I love Pentecostal Tabernacle, and I love this great youth group. And, uh, man, I'm just so excited. Isn't it, doesn't it feel amazing in here tonight? If you believe that, say amen. And uh, I did say that uh, I told everybody, bring your shouting shoes, and then I text the young people and I said I'm serious I'm bringing mine tonight and uh, I mean these aren't the I'm, I'm not used to wearing these but um, I'll shout in them anyways so whatever shoes you're wearing I'm expecting those to be your shouting shoes can I get an amen I, um, I believe that God is going to uh, I talked a little bit of, uh, in pre-service prayer about our identity on Sunday nights. This youth group, what God's going to do on Sunday nights. And um, I believe this is going to set the tone for how we are going to, uh, our services are going to flow. And so I want to uh, encourage you that we get locked in with what the Lord wants to say in this place tonight. And I really do believe God's given me a word. I spent this afternoon here at the church, and I'll be honest, I had no idea what I was going to preach until about 10 minutes before music practice. <laughs> and the Lord finally, I was like, please, God. And um, But I believe he's given me uh, a word for us tonight. And so if you have your Bibles... Turn to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and we're going to go to verse number 18. And man, I'm just, what an incredible job Brother Matthew did tonight. That was incredible. And I just, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house tonight. And we're, we're going to make the devil so mad in this place. And we're just going to punch the devil right between his ugly teeth. And we're going to stomp all over the devil tonight. I'm telling you, if you're not ready for it, you can be dismissed right now. Because this is it's going to get crazy in here. I'm just, I'm just giving you fair warning. And if you haven't prayed through to this point, I'm dismissing you right now. Because before we leave here tonight, everybody in the house is going to have an opportunity to pray through to the Holy Ghost. Come on, if you believe that, would you raise your hands? Now, would you clap your hands unto the Lord? Hallelujah! All right, 
tonight, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and we'll begin in verse number 18, and Jehoshaphat bowed his head. Thank you. All right, press play again. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah, everybody say Judah. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud, everybody say loud, Loud. everybody say loud, Loud. voice on high. They rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness Tekoa, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. Believe his prophets. So shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, that they should praise the beauty of holiness. Man, isn't holiness beautiful? As they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against their enemies, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. And with the help of the Lord tonight, I'm going to preach on this subject. Release the praisers. Release the praisers. Now would you do that and clap your hands like you really mean it? And would you lift up your voice with a shout of triumph if you have the victory? Come on, clap your hands like you really mean it. And shout unto God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Now, I'm going to get the boring part out of the way, the education part out of the way here at the beginning. But I want you to stay locked in. Now, we've, we've been building up to this moment. I believe that this is a hinge moment for refined student ministries, for this youth group and this Sunday night service, we've talked about our response to the word of the Lord, that the word of the Lord deserves a response. And there is a moment in time where uh, where the, the, we talked about where the children of Israel would respond with an amen. So everybody shout "Amen." amen. And it should be that every time the word is going forth and there is truth being preached, that there should be a response from us and something that says that 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 releases within us a shout that says amen, amen. which means i agree and i believe it and so it shouldn't happen young people where our church services are quiet they shouldn't be come on young men say amen, amen. We've been practicing this, and so it's time to put this into action. It shouldn't be quiet. When the word of the Lord is going forth, there ought to be a response that says, Amen. That says, I believe it. That says, Yes. That's what I'm talking about. So there's a, there's a response to the word of the Lord that should come from within us. And, and so we, we've been, I talked a little bit in pre-service prayer about our identity and and this this is the things that people will know us by and I uh, many many of you that are in here you are identified when people see you they see your name there is an identity that is attached to who you are and some of those things there could be multiple things that you are brother Nathan Matheny he is a man and he is an owner of Valley-wide pest control, the best in the valley, and definitely the best in Fireball. <laughs> and uh, that's an inside joke. But 
and he's a father, and we know the roles that he plays, and, 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 and he's, he, is, uh, 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 he is identified by those things. They're characteristics that identify who we are, and my Lord, we are in an identity crisis in the world today, and people don't know. Brother Matthew, you mentioned it before in your preaching that there's people who don't know from up from down and they don't know right from wrong and there are people who are not just men identifying as women and women identifying as men but there are people who are identifying as animals as cats and dogs and yeah I believe it because they're reverting back to their carnal nature they're, it is a, it's carnality that's driving them to those places and so there's an identity crisis that's going on in America, in the world. There, people are trying to figure out, who am I? What, what am I supposed to do? Who am I supposed to be? What's my career supposed to be? And there's this search of identity, of who we're supposed to be. And I, I, I'm just going to come right out and say it, young people. There's one thing that you can absolutely say with a surety, that you are an apostolic. And we should not be ashamed to be an apostolic. That we are one God in Jesus' name, Holy Ghost filled, baptized in his name, saved by Jesus Christ. Christ, I am unashamedly apostolic. If you're excited about that, shout amen. So the world has this identity crisis, and I have good news for you is that the Bible says that we are complete in Him. I don't have to wonder who I am. And 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 recently at a conference at the Clovis Church, I talked a little bit about image. And I talked about finding your identity and the only way that you're going to find that identity and you're going to find who you are is because you were made in the image of God. The only way that you're going to find who you are is in God. That's why it says you're complete in Him. You, you, don't, you don't quite see or understand or recognize. And Proverbs says, as water, as face, answer it to face and water. You don't quite know who you are. You don't quite see who you are. But when you get in the Spirit, you begin to see you or yourself as God sees you. And I can go into 1 Corinthians. And when Paul is writing in 1 Corinthians 13, he says, when I was a child, I... I would speak as a child. I, I did things that were childish and I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. The Amplified Version says this in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12. For now, in this time of imperfection, we see in a mere dimly a blurred reflection, a riddle. But then when the time of perfection, of completeness comes, we will see reality face to face. Now I know in part or just in fragments, but then I will know fully, just as I have been fully known by God. Is when you get yourself in the spirit, then you finally see who God sees you as. And you don't have to wonder, Brother Evan, if you're going to be a preacher of the gospel. The Holy Ghost already said that you are. And so the best thing you can do is you get in the spirit. You may not see the full picture now. You may not see very clearly now. But when you get in the Holy Ghost, you're going to see yourself as you've been fully known by God. Amen. You don't have to have an identity crisis. You're a child of the king. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You don't have to wonder. It's in the book. Get in the word of God. And so there's this identity crisis. And I don't plan to be very long. And I believe the Holy Ghost is just going to come in like a powerful wind in this house. There's this identity crisis that's happening. And people are trying to find out, who am I? What am I supposed to be? And I talked to you a little bit about, and I understand these Sunday nights, they're new. 
And one of the things that is going to be an identifying mark of our Sunday night services is that we come young people and we press and we fight and we, we, we cleanse ourselves, we purge ourselves on Saturday night and on Sunday mornings. It should be something that's so easy that we can step right into the Holy Ghost. And there should be an identifier. Part of our identity should be powerful pre-service prayer. It shouldn't take somebody getting up in here and cheerleading and come on somebody. Why don't you lift your... No, there ought to be something within us that says I've got to come and I've got to pray. I've got to fight all of hell and I've got to tap into heavenly places. Part of our identity should be powerful pre-service prayer. So that's... That's the identity that we're going to take on on these Sunday nights. And it's been prophesied that we're going to see our Sunday nights. There's going to be a flourishing and there's going to be a deepening. I believe in deep prayer and I believe in going to deep places in God. And I'll just stop right here and say something. Is that many times the problem that we have in going into deep places is that we refuse to let go of some things that are still on the surface. And we don't fast and we don't cut things away just to punish ourselves and we don't fast and we don't do all these things to earn brother Christopher we don't earn this relationship with God we don't earn our way into a pulpit we don't earn our way but we cut those things away so we can draw closer to God and when we draw closer to God there's a fruit of relationship that happens that comes out of you so you don't think you can perform your way into something to do for God, but it's going to be out of relationship. When I cut those things away, I can draw closer, and then God says, I can use that. Amen. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, I believe in us going deeper. There's no question God has been doing that. Taking us to deep places. Sending us the prophet of God. Brother McLeod, and he talked about the deep things of God. We've heard about the face of the deep. We've heard these things about going deeper. And it's going to take us, our, our foundation has to be strong. And a building is only as tall and is as strong as its foundation these are foundational, these core things. That they're important to our identity of who we are. And it's us going deeper. We've got to dig. Sometimes it's work, Brother Kyle. Sometimes we've got to dig and dig and dig to go deeper. But in order for us to grow, in order for us to get bigger, in order for this youth group to go where God wants us to go, there's got to be a strong foundation. And a strong foundation is a deep foundation. It's one where we plowed through some things and we pour that concrete as deep as we can get it. Because there's got to be a strong foundation in order for God to take us higher. The reason why people fall and they fail and there's morality issues is because they go to high places and their foundation can't support it. Their foundation is wrong. Their foundation may have a crack in it. But I'm here to tell you young people tonight is that God's taking us deeper because God's going to grow us. God's going to take us higher. I can't wait to see what God's going to do. But oh, I'm thankful for those moments where we go deeper in him. Hallelujah. Everybody shout amen. Amen. And so I believe this... Us going deeper, and God's taking us to deep places. Come on, let's pray. I feel a deepening right now. That's it, young people. Why don't you just tap right, right into the Holy Ghost? There's a flow of the Spirit that's happening in this house. You know why that's happened? It's because we've been to deep places in God. We recognize that depth. We recognize, oh, there's something different that's happening right now. 
That's it. Just tap right into the Holy Ghost and pray. We don't have to go any further without going deeper first. That's it. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Robo Satayarabo. And so there's these depths, but also part of our identity is we believe in the Word of God and we want to be strong in the Word. I don't despise not one bit a young man, an elder, pastor, it does not matter that gets up here and teaches the Word of God. That should be part of our identity. Is that we don't zone out. We don't fall asleep. Get out a notebook. and Why don't you take some notes and tune in to what the Lord is saying. And get, get, get a love for the teaching of the Word of God. Fall in love with teaching. And, and get in the Word of God. I, I just recently talked to a young man who was saying, well, what do I do right now? And I said, the best thing that you can do is get in the Word of God. Break it down. Eat it every day. Feed on it. Get, get, you, uh, get you the, uh, what's that, blue letter Bible. I use it all the time. I couldn't remember what it was. Get the blue letter Bible out. Break down the words and just let the word of the Lord speak to you. But we should be people of the word. And I, I, recently I've been, uh, uh, I've been, I love just taking a section of scripture that the Lord leads me to. And just start breaking it down. And, and, and it's amazing that when I start to break, I didn't get it from anybody else. But I found out there's a whole lot of people that are preaching and teaching. I'm like, man, that's amazing. But I didn't get it from them. I got it from the Holy Ghost. The Lord starts speaking to me and I start breaking these things down. And man, the Lord will speak to you in his word. And the Lord will deal with you. He'll give you convictions and he'll talk to you. You want to know how to live and you want to know the character of God? Get in the epistles and start to read those. Put your Bible app on every morning and every day while I'm brushing my teeth and I'm getting ready for work. Uh, yeah, I got it from pastor. But he told me a long time ago he puts that Bible app on. You know what I do every day? I put the Bible app on and I just let the word just speak to me. You know how I got my son's middle name? is because I put on the Bible. I didn't even know why I was doing it. I went to the book of Luke, and I was like, wait a minute. I normally listen to the epistles, Brother Nathan. And I get to the book of Luke, and it starts talking about John. And John is in the belly of Elizabeth, uh, and he starts tossing and turning, and he was full of the Holy Ghost. And I knew my son's middle name was going to be John. How did I get that? From the Word of God. So love the Word. Get in the word. You know why, brother? I'm not trying to embarrass you, brother Charlie. I love you, man. You know that. I'm not trying to embarrass you. But you know why God's using him the way that he is? I hate to tell you. It's not because his last name is Sanders. That's not why. You know why, young man? It's because that boy gets in the word. Excuse me, young man. My apologies. He gets in the word. That's why he can get up here and talk about the reverence of the Lord. He can break down those scriptures and he can quote scriptures and he can flow as easy as he does. It's not because his last name is Sanders. He does, there's many times he doesn't even want to be up here in front of you all. But it's because he's gotten in the word and that word is like a fire that's shut up within his bones. And it's just got to be released. It's got to come out. So love the word. That should be part of the identity of this Sunday night is that we love the word. I don't care if it's preaching. I don't care if it's teaching. But oh God, we've got to have the word. Right now, lift your hands and receive that. That's it. Lift your hands and receive that. And let the Holy Ghost cover that right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Another way that we should identify is 
that we identify by holiness. Now, it's not just an outward holiness. And I taught this just a few weeks ago. And then, uh, Brother McLeod, what an incredible, and if you have not heard Wednesday night, I've already sent it out to a few people. I encourage you, send it out. It was an amazing word of, from God. What a timely word. And I believe in holiness. And don't get me wrong. The outward holiness is important. Jesus told the Pharisees, he said, cleanse that which is on the inside first, that the outside may be clean also. There is an inward and an outward holiness. And so we should be separated, Brother Toto, by our actions, by our words, by our speech. And we, we should be separated in our dress. And it's okay, young ladies, to go somewhere and look different. And so he, he called us a peculiar people. You know what that word means? It means odd. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're odd. Man, that's the truest thing you've said all night. That's what God called us to be. That holiness is a separation. Not, not an isolation, but it's insulation. That we, 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 we separate ourselves from the things of the world and separate ourselves unto God. That's why we... We uh, have that reverence, is that holiness of God. That's why we don't take God's name in vain. His name is holy. It should be separated from unclean and impure things. That's why we don't say his name in vain. And uh, that's why we have respect for the word of God. It says that his word is holy. So that's why we, we man, we get excited when the word of God is, t- is, is, t- is, t- is taught and yeah, and I'm not going to even get into all that. But I'll just tell you, the Word of God is the most important thing that you can read. There's no commentary. There is nothing that they're coming out with in Israel right now. And they found this. They found that. That's all great. But this is the forever established Word of God. Get your nose in this book. The oil's falling right now. That was a dad joke. I got my dad's shoes on, Brother Nathan. So love the word. Get in the word. And, uh, and it's another identifier is our holiness, that we separate ourselves unto the Lord. And So this last one that I feel to talk about, man, we're going to get it. The Holy Ghost is going to move here tonight. And I'm excited about it. I'm taking my jacket off. It's going to be so I'm getting ready. Come on, get ready. Woo! If you're ready, shout amen. amen. And so the last thing that I'm going to talk to us about tonight, there, there's so much more that I can go into, but I, I'm not for the sake of time, and I just feel I, I'm ready. I'm ready just to release this thing. And the last thing I want to talk about is an identifier, part of our identity, and something that should be, I mean, it should be part of the culture of Sunday nights, is there should be, a release of radical praise in this house. Oh, you're already quiet on me now. I mean, you shouted amen when we talked about prayer. And you, you sure shout, shouted amen when I was talking about the word of God. But part of the identity that we should have on Sunday nights is that of radical praise. One that doesn't care about your neighbor. One that doesn't care what I look like. I'm talking about radical praise. It needs to be released in this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All throughout the Bible we read about praise. We see praise. We heard about it today, and I thought Pastor was going to mess me up tonight. And I was, I was like, all right, well, I'll take that as confirmation. And we see David, man. David was radical in his praise. And I'm telling you, something that needs to be released in this house is unashamed, radical praise. Now, here's, here's the issue. Let me tell you, I'm going to point out the issue. The problem we have with letting ourselves go in praise is because we're worried about what somebody else thinks of us. We get so caught up in what somebody, we get caught up in the Michaels, 
looking down from atop there uh, in their little tower, looking down at us, mocking us. We're afraid of what we're going to look like on the live stream, uh, but I pray to God that there would be a release of praise in this house. One that doesn't care what you look like. Uh, one that doesn't care what you sound like, uh, but you just get lost. Come on, what, do you have to have music to praise? Do you have to have singing? No, my praise is enough for him. Hallelujah. There's two places I want to point out in Scripture. In fact, you can stand. Brother Sergio and Brother Edward, you can help me out. I talked to them before service, and they're going to help me out tonight. And here's, here's the deal when we see about praise in Scripture. And, man, there's so much. There's so much we can go into all this. And, man, David, David, I don't know exactly how many times praise was written in the Psalms, but it was a lot. And he was a man of praise. And there's a reason. And I don't have time to get into all of this, but it's interesting that the tabernacle of Moses and the tabernacle of David, how different they were. And that David recognized that it was out of sincerity and a sincere heart. And the sacrifices of God, it's a broken heart, a contrite spirit. There's an internal thing. And so we are. We're spirit, we're soul, and we're body. We are a soul, and we have a spirit, and there we, we are the body. And a lot of times, we don't allow our praise to go past our motions. Right? We don't let our praise go past that besides just the motions, right? That's the external. Now, you've heard this before. You think I made all this up? No, I was paying attention when the pastor was preaching. And so there's the outward. There's the body, right? But then we get past that, man. We feel emotional. We're like, oh, man, this feels good. What is that I feel? Wow. Man, I'm moving, but, man, there's something I'm feeling. But then there's a place that you get to where it's past the motions, past the emotions, and man, you just get lost in the spirit. And you get past the part where you're worried about anybody else because man, my praise is for God. You, you forget about Michael standing up in that tower because man, I'm just lost in worship and praise. It's not for you, it's for God. Sorry, Michael, it's not for you, it's for God. I wish to God that there would be a radical praise that would come on some of you right now. That you would break out those chains of condemnation, of insecurity, and just let God use you right now in praise. Man, I'm, while, while, while praying and studying, again, I really had no idea what I was going to preach. I was just studying and praying. There was a, I saw in scripture that uh, David danced before the Lord with all his might. Then David knew about praise for a reason. It wasn't the first time that David had prayed, first of, praised, first of all. He got crazy in the Holy Ghost. But we see that we go all the way back, Brother Sergio, to when he faces Goliath. You know what's interesting? Judah in Scripture means praise. That's literally who they were, was praise. And what's interesting is they're one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter number 17, if I can pull it up here, 1 Samuel chapter 17, David goes out to face Goliath. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 17, now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle. Now you got to realize there was a bunch of pansies 
I don't know if that's correct or not. But there was a bunch of pansies of those men in the, in, with the children of Israel. There was nobody to stand up. This, this Philistine, not even, a child, not even a child of God, this guy was mocking them and just beating them up. There wasn't not one man that stood up and said, you know what? Enough is enough. Right. This ain't happening anymore. So, we read in the first part of 1 Samuel chapter 17. And this is what blows my mind. Brother Nathan, the children of Israel had home field advantage. They had home field advantage. In sports, that means you've got an advantage because you've got the home team on your side. And most teams... They win when they're at home, not away. And they had home field advantage. First Samuel 17. These Philistines gathered together. Their armies to battle were gathered together at Shoko, which belongeth to Judah. Goliath, I got news for you, buddy. You've been mocking us. You've been talking bad about us. You've been trying to destroy us, but I've got news for you. We're on home field advantage, and this battle belongs to Judah. Hey, I wonder if there's any young ladies that would join them and would take off. I told you where your sound shoes. I wonder if there's any moms and dads uh, that would take a lap right now and praise him. Goliath, do you understand? David went in there and David said, this bound, this field, this valley belongs to Judah. It belongs to my praise. And right now, if you've been fighting, if you've been battling, I say you let some praise out. That's it, would you just dance uh, like nobody's watching? Uh, would you dance uh, like nobody's around? Uh, would you praise him? to no limits and I'm telling you right now I ain't giving more praise and landmark than I give here I'm sorry but this is home field advantage so when the enemy comes in he better recognize I've got Judah I've got praise and this valley it belongs to praise that's right now dance before the Lord
when God sent Sister Sanders and I to this valley. He sent us because we were already giant killers before we showed up. The biggest problem in the valley of Elah was not Goliath. But brother Ishmael, it was that nobody would step up and fight Goliath. When we got to the valley, I know it's going to be online and it might hurt somebody's little feelings. But when we got to the valley, the biggest problem wasn't the giant of division. It was that there wasn't a David that was going to step up and say, we're not going to be divided and let the voice of the giant rule this valley. Is this contagious? David was a giant killer, Brother Aguilera. But he raised up a whole generation of giant killers. Pastor, why are you here on Sunday night with all these young people acting like a fool? Because I'm not the only giant killer here. Pastor, how you gonna run two laps? Because I'm raising up a generation of giant killers. I speak life into your ministry. I speak confidence into your spirit. I speak a holy boldness on you. Let your praise out. God has raised you up to slay every giant. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. That's why you no brought your kids, mama. Is, I want you to know that Cause you're raising up giant killers. No matter what That's the why you're here dancing. him when you're a praiser you can praise him all by yourself in a valley when you're a praiser you can praise him while the music's playing you can praise him while everything's silent 
Go ahead and look up there right now. That young man don't need anybody else, but he's up in the balcony praising God because he's a praiser, and that's what praisers do. Hallelujah. I feel a radical militant apostolic anointing on this youth group. I feel a radical militant apostolic Holy Ghost anointing on some young ladies. I feel a radical militant Holy Ghost anointing on some young men of God. Hallelujah. But pastor, I don't know what to do for my ministry. Let me tell you how to, what to do. Praise God. Before I was a preacher, I was a praiser. I said before I was a preacher, I learned how to dance before I learned how to preach. Before David was a king, he was praising out in a shepherd field. Hallelujah. They said, ain't nobody going to be praying around here. But Daniel said, I don't care what the devil don't allow. I'm going to pray and praise my God anyhow. And so he opened his windows towards Jerusalem. And he prayed and he praised his way right into a lion's den. But I just saw you dancing like you didn't care what anybody thought, Sister Kerrigan. That's the kind of prayer that'll pray and praise your way into some challenges. But I'm going to tell you that the same praise uh, that brought the enemy attack against you uh, is the prayer. You can praise your way right out of that den of lions. You're coming out of your cave. You're coming out of your depression. You're coming out of your insecurity. You're coming out of your anxiety. I speak it right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, break forth in these young people. Let them find their identity in God. Right where you're at, why don't you just let those tongues begin to flow for a little while? Brother Ishmael and Brother Eric come from Mendota. He's from uh, Santa Maria, Pastor Cruz's church. Why are they here? Because this is where the praisers are, and you young men are praisers. Wherever you came from, the Holy Ghost led you here. Why? Because this is where praisers are, Brother Kyle. This is praiser central. We're those that don't believe the valley belongs to division. But we believe the valley belongs to Judah. And Judah means praise. And your praise will lift you above division. Look at Sister Destiny. She ain't even looking and worried about what anybody's doing. I wonder if there's a young man that don't care if any girl's watching. Mm. There's something shaking beneath the surface. The tectonic sh- uh, the tectonic plates of the spirit are beginning to shift in Kerman. Oh yeah, it won't be very long until you're going to feel it. You're going to see it. You're going to watch it. Satan, your kingdom's coming down. I heard a voice from heaven say, 
Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Mm, just let the Holy Ghost flow. Mm. Mm. That's it, Sister Janess. The spirit of a praiser is upon you, sis. Mm. Mm, God inhabits the praises of his people. Wherever you make it a place of praise, what you're doing is you're making it a habitation for God. They that have set in darkness have seen a great light. You begin to see him. Why? Because he's attracted to your praise. I want you young people to hear, hear your pastor for a moment. You know our church is a healing place. You've heard that for the last four years, and we've seen it, Brother Brad. We have seen it. This place was packed full. Balcony was full this morning. Why? Because God has sent broken people, and God's been to healing them. This church raises up and sends out ministry. You've heard about it. You've seen it. Your ministry. You are ministry. Every one of you. You are ministry. You say, but pastor, I don't know what my ministry is. You're the ministry of a praiser and everything else will just unfold. Everything else just unfolds, Brother Matheny. I remember you coming in here and you broke through healing. And one Sunday morning, I heard a rich, deep tongue coming from the back right. And I looked up and it was Brother Nathan Matheny. The shell just cracked and the Holy Spirit was being released through that man of God. Pretty soon, he'd get up there and he'd go to shouting. Before he was a men's leader, he was a praiser. Before he was a minister in this church, he was, I want to tell you, you may not know what your ministry is, but it starts in your praise. All that being said, you hear me? It's mostly the young people here tonight. This is, man, I love Saturday night, Sunday nights because it makes me feel young and old at the same time, Brother Brad. Sister Sanders and I and these ministers in this church, we have to work really hard to heal people through the power of God. God uses healed people to heal people. It's a it's tough, dirty business. But you young people, I've learned it's easier to raise up healthy kids and young adults than it is to fix broken adults. I'm going to say that one more time. It's easier to raise up healthy young people than it is to fix broken adults. And so there's something special about this group. I know there's brokenness in all of us. But life hasn't kicked the faith out of you yet. You hear me right now. Life hasn't kicked the faith out of you yet. That's why it says, Brother Jason, we, us men, we got to have faith like young people, like a little child. But while, you're, while you got that faith and life hasn't beat you up yet, you can change the atmosphere of your world. Not only that, I'm going to tell you that you don't have to have a situation that life kicks the faith out of you. If you'll lock in. You'll lock in on these Sunday nights. You're going to avoid some trials. You're going to avoid some trouble. You're going to avoid some sin. And you're going to avoid some situations that have caused others to, uh, uh, to, to come in. And we got to work really hard to get them back up. And we got to work really hard to heal them. 
but I'm telling you there's something special about this group. This is the engine of revival in this church. This along with the prayers of the elders. Those that's a two that's a twofold in, engine of revival. That's right. Excuse me. And so you get a hold of God. You get radical like pastor. You get radical like Sister Sanders. You get radical like Brother Brad and Sister Julie. You get radical like Brother and Sister Matheny who say, you know what, we're coming on Sunday night even when we don't have. You get radical like this Martinez family that God's got the Holy Ghost flowing through every way you turn. You get radical for Jesus and watch God turn your world upside down. That's how you change a city. That's how you build a building that seats a thousand. That's how God anoints you to preach meetings. That's how God raises up a church to dispatch missionaries around the world. It's because every spirit of fear has detached and there's a Holy Ghost anointed radicalization that takes place. Hallelujah. 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 You go deep in prayer. You get in that word. You're not going to get so radical you'll get out of balance. The word and your pastor will keep you in balance. You go deep in God. If you get out of line, I'll, I'll bump you and say, hey, listen, come on back into the fold a little bit more. You're getting out there where the wolves are. You don't worry. I'm not afraid to pastor you. I'll help you. But you don't be afraid to, you, to, to move forward into the deep. If you get to drowning, don't worry. I know how to swim. I've been out there before you ever got there. Some of these men and ladies of God know how to swim in those deep. Well, we'll come on. We'll rescue you and pull you back in a little bit more shallow for a while and get you healed. But don't you be afraid to go out into the deep things of God. Lift your hands to God. I'm going to pray over this word that Brother Brad released in it. This, co this young congregation right now. God, I pray, oh, Brother Brad, come join me. God, I pray over the word that you've released through this man. God, I pray that the fowl of the air would not devour it up. But would you put a hedge around your word and a hedge around the minds of these young people. I pray over Brother Brad that you would replenish his mind. That when doubt and frustration and disappointment come, <laughs> the attack of the enemy that says you didn't know what you were doing tonight. I want to tell you, Brad Kendrick, every word you said was anointed by the Holy Ghost. God replenish virtue into this man, his family. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want you to know, young ladies, that Sister Sanders and I believe in you. Not only that, Brother Brad and Sister Julia Kendrick believe in you. But more than that, Sister Ashley, God believes in you. If God believes in you, it don't matter if anybody else doesn't believe in you. You and God, Brother Pepper, are a majority. You and God against 10,000. You're a majority because God's bigger than 10,000. That's why you got to stay linked up with him. Amen, 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 amen. I love you. Brother Brad Kendrick, when the man of God preaches, he goes and gets the privilege of sitting at that table in there, and somebody's going to bring you a meal. Sister Julia, Meal, these young people are going to serve you because you fed us the good word of the Lord tonight. Amen, amen, amen. How many love your youth pastor? So thankful, so, so, so thankful for this great couple. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, God. I pray that you bless the food and fellowship in Jesus' name. Thank you for being here tonight. We'll see you next door.